I am the Director of Nursing with the Royal College of Nursing with accountability for nursing policy and public affairs. I provide overall strategic direction that enables the organisation to advance nursing practice and achieve its Royal Charter objectives. It is my teams that enable Royal College of Nursing members and the wider nursing, health and social care community to enhance their practice, develop nursing as a profession and a career and influence nursing, health and social care policy. I have now been a registered nurse for 30 years. I was educated first as a registered general nurse in Bristol in the South West, qualifying in 1991 staying there post-graduation to work on acute wards and the coronary care unit. I later moved to Great Ormond Street Hospital to become dual registered as a registered sick children's nurse. Returning to the South West region later, I studied health visiting at the University of the West of England and after qualifying, worked as a health visitor for many years in Somerset. Following this, I had many years of experience in leadership roles in safeguarding and quality. This included both provider and regional roles, and as an Associate Director of Nursing and Quality in a South West Clinical Commissioning Group before I joined the Royal College of Nursing in February 2018. Here, I first took up the role of Regional Director for the South West Region, and then moved into my current National Director of Nursing post. I am a graduate of the NHS Leadership Academy following the Elizabeth Garrett Anderson programme and I gained an MSc in Senior Leadership at Birmingham University. The Florence Nightingale Foundation ignites future leaders and fuels potential. Over the past year, I have experienced many areas which support this. My experience of the scholarship has been the drawing together of the experiences and challenges that enable people to learn from another in an open yet confidential environment. The focus has been on the interaction between people from different health and care sectors. One of the considerable benefits has been to take formal thinking time away from the workplace to enable me as a senior leader to think about myself within role, within my organisation and also in society. It has been fantastic to have space to discuss and reflect, really reflect on the difficult leadership challenges that come with leading and the complexity of difficult decision making. There have been numerous standout moments in this Florence Nightingale year, but the practical and informative sessions at the Royal Academy for Dramatic Arts were quite unexpected in their ability to bring your presence forward and allow a mirror to be put up in front of you to see how you may be perceived. The personal impact for me has been renewed confidence and energy and a commitment to delivering on current and future leadership roles. I have tackled some big challenges in this leadership journey with the support of my scholars cohort such as the challenges of being a corporate leader versus a team leader and how to cope with what can occasionally feel like divided loyalties to both organisation and to your teams. I have also tackled complex leadership issues, such as leading on issues you may not wholly agree with, but are responsible for making happen and the challenges of balancing delivery of results and high performance with support for individual staff and their issues. From a personal support perspective, the Florence Nightingale Foundation Scholarship Year has expanded my network of contacts for the long term with a set of people at similar stages of their leadership journey. Not being directly patient facing in my current role, I looked at quality improvement from a clinical leadership perspective. We ran a clinical leadership program and I undertook an evaluation of the LCN clinical leadership program at NHS East and North Hertfordshire, evaluating its service improvement impact and contributions to the Pathways to Excellence accreditation supported by NHS England. 
With the key facet of the NHS quality improvement agenda, it is vital to approach leadership as a significant influencer to drive up safety standards through improved knowledge and application. The project aimed to establish not only the impact of the learning on the participants' clinical leadership capabilities and responses during COVID-19 pandemic, but also the wider team and organisational impact and ultimately the impact and improvement of patient care. To analyse the learning and impact in relation to the Pathways to Excellence programme to form recommendations in forming future programme development. This evaluation project was a collaborative venture with the participants, commissioners and organisational leads and aimed at gaining a better understanding of the impact of nurses' clinical leadership on service provision. The experiences being the result of participation on the programme in a nursing directorate whose core values are informed by the Pathways to Excellence programme and compounded at an organisational level by the recent experience of staff and service reconfiguration due to the COVID-19 pandemic. The evaluation was of a specific cohort of 21 aspiring senior nurse leaders undertaking the programme with the aim of developing facilitator skills to support other prospective nurse leaders across the organisation. The evaluation followed a mixed methods approach analysing previous evaluations and tri triangulating it with the qualitative data from present participants and commissioners through contribution to focus groups. Peers and managers were invited to complete surveys and data. Shaping the future workforce. The evaluation strategy aimed to demonstrate that the provision of learning resulted in a measurable change to professional practice, including, where appropriate, improvement in service provision positively affecting patient experience and outcomes. Using a context, input, processes and product model as an evaluation methodology enabled a comprehensive yet situated approach to evaluation capturing the complex process of measuring whether the learning outcomes had been achieved. The four stages are viewed through the lens of the core values of the learning organisation and integrated stakeholder engagement through all elements of the model. The approach also exemplified the collaborative nature between educators and clinicians to promote evaluation that explores the multiple components and contextual factors associated with quality improvement education in practice. The biggest learning and impact of the programme during the COVID-19 pandemic has been through the recognition of personal development, enabling the enhancement and application of leadership styles to practice in order to support teams, each other and improve resilience. The organisation leads and participants reported the development of high level communication skills and application of the variety of leadership styles adapted to different situations with a strong focus on the importance of role modelling noted. Importantly, there was a strong focus on the recognition of the requirement to deliver high standards of patient care and patient safety despite the challenges of COVID-19. And finally, a word of thanks to my sponsor, to the Deputy Chief Nurse at Health Education England, Liz Fenton. Liz has supported and enabled my involvement with the Florence Foundation and is a great supporter of personal development, an advocate for nursing and for lifelong learning. Liz is a champion of quality improvement and committed to improving the experience of every aspect of care. Thank you to both Liz and the Florence Nightingale Foundation for this scholarship year, despite the challenges of the pandemic.